NASCAR is making more changes to the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series schedule, specifically with the playoffs and potentially with the addition of an international race, plus where everybody's going for the remaining seats that are open in silly season. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Racing's coming up this weekend. People are getting back into shops. People are talking, sending out texts. There's a lot of news coming out this week, more than there was last week. I mean, heck, on Monday, we got news that Adam Stevens, Chris Rebell's crew chief, is going to be out for an extended period of time calling the races remotely from the team's war room because he has a double knee injury that he suffered on vacation. Not ideal for him. Hopefully, he has a quick recovery. But on Tuesday morning, Jordan Bianchi talked about the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series schedule, and nobody is more obsessed with finding out the 2025 schedule quite like Jordan Bianchi. He's like one of those Bigfoot shows. They're just constantly chasing something that's out there, except Jordan actually always does seem to find out what it is. Meanwhile, we're in season 17 of Finding Bigfoot, and guess what? Still haven't found him because he's not there, but I'm not here to be a Bigfoot truther or not. Jordan Bianchi, though, talked about the changes that are upcoming for the playoffs in 2025, and we already know, right, that Gateway, New Hampshire, and Darlington are being added back into the playoffs, and that it will include the removal of Watkins Glen, Atlanta, and Homestead as well. Well, another big change is happening. Talladega will move to the round of eight next year. It will be the third from last race of the season adding an absolute wild card into the round of eight. It's a diabolical move by NASCAR's part, and it is going to put a ton of pressure onto these teams. And you're putting a crapshoot race into the round that will determine who your championship four are. I don't love it, but, but... I understand why they're doing this. You want to talk about schedule diversity, right? Uh, I have I have championed for the idea if we're going to have this elimination style format, we need to have a championship round of being essentially three races. Give these guys, these four drivers, three races to determine who the champion is. Having a one race winner takes all at Phoenix, that's just not doing it for anybody. So it's, I mean, Phoenix Raceway is cheeks. It's terrible. It's not good. We should stop going there for the championship race. But if you want to have it in that championship rotation, then make it three races. I will say this, adding Caldega to the final, you know, round of the regular of, of the playoffs before you get to the championship race does create some schedule diversity there. You'll have Las Vegas Motor Speedway starting off the round of eight. Then you'll go to Talladega. Las Vegas Motor Speedway being an intermediate track. You go to Talladega. That is a super speedway race. You then go to Martinsville. That's a short track. And then you finish off your season in the championship race at Phoenix, which is this hybrid nonsense that not many people like. But you got scheduled diversity there other than a road course, but the Roval will remain in the playoffs. So the playoff schedule as it currently stands, the first round will have Darlington kicking off the uh, playoffs just like it always should, except for this year because things got a little bit wonky. Then we're off to Gateway. St. Louis doesn't have to worry about an NFL team to compete with on Sunday. So that is kind of slots into a perfect spot for them. And then the first round will end at Bristol Motor Speedway under the lights Saturday night for the Bristol night race. Round number two has, starts off with New Hampshire. Sure. Not sure anybody's super psyched about that. It then moves on to Kansas, which has produced pretty banger races in recent uh, years, especially with the Gen 7 car. I mean, heck, we had the closest NASCAR finish in history the last time we were there back in the spring between Kyle Larson and Chris Buescher. And then that round will end at the Charlotte Roval, a bit of a wild card being added in there for the final race of that second round. Then you move on to the third round, which we just talked about a moment ago, where you'll be going from Las Vegas to Talladega to Martinsville and then on to your championship race at Phoenix. Jordan Bianchi also talked about the possibility of an international race for the NASCAR Cup Series, and it appears that the battle between Mexico and Montreal has been continuing on, but it appears that Mexico may be coming out on top here. You know, the famous uh, Mexican-Canadian War of 1892. No, I'm just kidding. It's I don't think those two countries have ever warred because, well, the United States has been in the middle, and they're like, knock it off. We don't want to beat the crap out of both of you. So Mexico, will possibly, maybe, potentially could be joining the NASCAR Cup Series schedule. The deal is not signed yet. International contracts seemingly take forever at this rate. Montreal doesn't seem like it's going to be in play for 2025, which is a bummer, but that is going to be a track that is difficult to get set up because, I mean... Ugh. You have the F1 date. They don't want to have anything before that. And then having it after, then you have to set the racetrack back up and it becomes pretty complicated to slot it in there. But if NASCAR does head down to Mexico, Jordan Bianchi says that June 8th is the reserve date for that race, which 
makes a lot of sense. It would be partnered with Sonoma on a back to back. Again, makes a lot of sense. Northern California down to Mexico. And then you could go back to Charlotte or vice versa. However, you want to do that setup right there. It also makes sense because that spot on the calendar will be vacated by Gateway, who moves into the playoffs. If Mexico is added, Richmond will be losing one of their dates. That is where they'll get that uh, freed up date from to go to Mexico. So if they do go down there, get your passports ready for everybody that's in the industry, uh, because it seems like there's a pretty solid chance the Cup Series could get down there. I'm not super psyched on the layout of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez that it is now. When the Bush Series raced there back in 2005, 6, and 7, that that layout was a lot better to me. It had the old Parabolica down in that final corner to put you back out on the front stretch. Now you go through that stadium section, the old baseball stadium that's there. I just don't think that's going to be very good for Cup cars, depending on the layout they use. They don't necessarily have to use the uh, F1 layout, but for cup cars, I just don't think it would produce very good racing visuals. Yeah, great, but not maybe the best racing. So that's kind of where we stand at on the schedule as it, as it currently is. We're still waiting for NASCAR to put it out. Don't expect any more crazy changes. Oh, uh, Bob Pockers, and I think maybe Jordan Bianchi as well. I don't know. Either one of them. One of them talked about the possibility of Rockingham. A lot of fans have been talking about getting a uh, cup date back to Rockingham. Cup Series is not going to Rockingham in 2025. We talked about that a few weeks ago. The truck series and the Xfinity series could be in play for Rockingham, but it's not going to be the Cup series, at least not for 2025. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra or Driven shirt on. I almost said BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Moving on to silly season. Where do we currently stand at in NASCAR Cup Series silly season? I heard some Xfinity stuff this past week, which we'll have to do an Xfinity write-up once we kind of have more information on more than just a couple of the seats that I heard about. But for the Cup Series side of things, we currently still, of course, have the number seven car at Spire Motorsports. That is open. They will fire Corey LaJoy at the end of the year. He'll move on to something else. We'll get to that in a second. They had that free spot open. And everything is pointing to Justin Haley rejoining the team that he got his first win for, that he got their first win for, regardless of what the guy that currently races for that team says, that it wasn't a real win or wasn't a real team. Uh, Justin Haley is the favorite to land over at Spire. I have heard that Rodney Childers is really high on Justin Haley, wants to work with Justin Haley, apparently. So it um, sounds like Justin Haley might end up over at Spire. At least he's the favorite as it currently stands. Other seats that are open. We know that Front Row Motorsports has a third seat to fill as well. That appears that it is going to be Zane Smith. He is currently on loan from Track House to Spire Motorsports. It now sounds like he'll get out of his Track House deal and he'll rejoin the team that he won a Truck Series championship for, the team that he got his first NASCAR Cup Series top 10 for last year at the Coke 600 in 2023. Zane Smith to a third seat over at Front Row Motorsports. He and Noah Gragson have a great relationship. They grew up in uh, on the West Coast together. They seemingly get along great. Todd Gillen, another West Coast guy via, you know, North Carolina, but has a lot of West Coast ties there. The debate between whether it was going to be Sam Mayer or Zane Smith appeared to be pretty uh, big within the Front Row Motorsports team, but it sounds like Zane Smith is going to win out on this one. The third seat over at 2311 Racing, which we expect to buy one of those Stuart Haas Racing Charters. Once the charter agreement comes into place, they'll, I guess, make that official uh, for... Well, once that finally happens, but Riley Herbst, it was always Riley Herbst. He's expected to join that team. Sounds like his family has kicked in a lot of money. He also has that B2B deal with his family's convenience stores and Monster. So there's additional Monster money there. Riley Herbst will be in that third seat once they finally announce it. I mean, heck, Denny Hamlin even tweeted impressive after he won that race at uh, the Brickyard a couple weeks ago. Riley Herbst to 2311 Racing. The third seat over at Track House. Again, another charter that they have uh, acquired from Stuart Haas Racing just hasn't been announced yet. That will be Shane Van Gisbergen. No shocks there. They're expected to re-sign Daniel Suarez, and they'll continue on as a three-car team in 2025. Uh, all three drivers being in-house at Track House, of course. Moving on to Colleg Racing. Both of their seats are open. From what I've heard, Adrian Allmendinger moving up to the Cup Series seems highly likely again for next year. I don't think Daniel Hemrick is going to return in that 31 car uh, next year at, at Colleg. I'm not sure where he's going. I don't think it's going to be Colleg Cup next year, though. So there could potentially be another seat open there. Maybe Sam Mayer ends up there. or But their Cup lineup, I uh, think it's going to be AJ and then somebody else that's not Daniel Hemrick. Um, heck, 
if if it's Ty Dillon, uh, we will riot. We will storm, welcome North Carolina, <laughs> and make sure that does not happen. I like Ty. He's a nice guy, just not a Cup Series driver over at Colleg again. And then we have Rick Ware Racing. They, of course, if Justin Haley moves over to Spire, we'll have that number 51 car open as well as the 15 car. Maybe that's a landing spot for Corey LaJoy. I haven't heard his name linked to the team, but he does have a bit of sponsorship with him. That team, of course, will look for a driver with some sponsorship. Justin Haley brought some over as well when he went there. Uh, it could be a spot for Corey LaJoy to land at. Could it also be a spot for Ryan Priest as well. So he looks to remain in the Cup Series after losing his ride at Stuart Haas Racing. But that's where the Xfinity, or Cup Series, rather, Cup Series silly season currently stands. Kind of expect all those guys to end up right where we just talked about them going into. So let me know in the comments what you think about the 2025 schedule, silly season as it currently stands. And like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.